Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's episode, we're chronicling my opening of the first martial arts school of my own in 20 years. Andrew and I are going to talk about that. This is going to happen in several parts. We're going to put it together. You're going to get to hear or watch the whole thing as one. But us together, this is going to happen in pieces. Shout out, thank you, as always, to Andrew for your support and coming on the show and all the work that you do behind the scenes. And if you have a great guest suggestion, best thing to do is go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, fill out the guest form. You can also use that for a topic suggestion. But if you've got feedback, maybe something a little more direct, you're welcome to reach out to Andrew or I, Andrew at whistlekick.com, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Our social media is at whistlekick. And if you want to support us, Best thing to do, go to whistlekick.com. Check out all the things that we're going on, that we've got going on. Find something that engages you. And while you're there, maybe pick up something in the store and save 15% with the code PODCAST15. You ready? Let's talk about this. I think so. So as we're recording this, this is just shy of 11 a.m. on a Tuesday. And tomorrow, Wednesday, at 4 p.m., my martial arts school opens. Yep, you will be holding your first classes in a number of years. Not it, it, you have you used to have a school before. <clears throat> yep, and it's not like you haven't taught since then and now. You've taught seminars all over. Thankfully, oh, yep. man, do you know how how terrified I would be if I had not been consistently teaching between yep. seminars and and an, and events and stuff? Oh, but in I'd terms of having your your own school, this is going yeah. To be... I have not had my own students in twenty yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I opened that school when I came out of college, fall of 2001, and closed it about two years later. I had two students make it to Blue Belt, mm-hmm. and that was that was it. And and you know, just to go on record, I, I've talked about this. The reason I closed it is because I was growing my IT company and I didn't have enough left at the end of the day. And I was showing up and I was fried and I, I was getting irritable and. I just knew it wasn't going to be a good experience for my students. Now, in hindsight, I might have done it a little differently because I, I turned them loose. I said, you know, I want you to go train with other people. There were two other martial arts schools in town. Uh, sadly, most of them stopped training altogether, and that really bummed me out. I didn't think that would happen. I thought they would go to one of those other places. What about so those if I had it, um, neither, neither kept training. It was it was sad. Mm-hmm. Um. So I would do that differently, but also keep in mind, you know, when I opened that school, I was 22. Yeah. You know, I had, I had some teaching skill and I had some martial arts skill. I didn't really have running business martial arts school skill that I do now. Yeah. And, you know, I think the biggest question somebody might ask is, is why am I doing it? Andrew, ask me, why am I doing this? Well, I mean, why are you doing it? You've, for 20 plus years, you've been without a school. Why now? Yeah. What's different? There are a few things going on. One, I'm working with a, a number of martial arts schools. Like we do consulting and I'm, I'm helping them because, you know, let's, let's face it, all, mar- all businesses are really the same. It's about providing value and being consistent and things like that. But as I work with schools and I'm helping them grow, I get really excited about it and I get a little jealous that I'm not getting to do that. So that's part of it. Uh, another part of it is I always try to test theories in a low risk way, right? Like, so I'm not going to go to a client and say, I think you should do this really crazy thing in your martial arts school. It'll probably help your students or make more money or reach more people. What, right? That's scary. Well, I can do that for myself because I'm the one that's going to, that has to fix it. Right. So, uh, it gives me in a, uh, a test bed, uh, in a sense. And then the third reason, the most important reason to me is You know, because you've been around when I've taught so many times and people who've come to the seminars that I've taught know that my biggest passion is in helping people learn how to learn. That the way most martial arts schools run, I believe, has room for improvement in the way that that information is conveyed. I'm not talking about the fact, you know, you, you shouldn't teach this move or you have to teach this move. I'm not talking about forms versus no forms. I'm talking about very, very simple principles that I think are lost on most martial arts schools. And we bring some of that in on the Matic stuff, the martial arts teacher training and certification stuff that Craig and I do. 
But I have a theory that if I implement all these things that I know and I do them well, I can get students to progress twice as fast. Hmm. I believe, and, and I'm opening my school at one day a week, but let's pretend it was two days a week because that's the average. Most people go to classes two days a week. Yeah. That if I had students that were training twice a week, that I could get many of them to black belt levels of competency. I'm not talking about just putting a belt on their waist, but I could get them to black belt levels of competency in two years. Hmm. And that's a pretty bold statement. It is. And it's one thing to say, if you do these things that, that I believe in, this would this might happen for you. Hmm. And it's another thing to say, I'm going to build a school around this. Yeah. yeah. And one of my biggest challenges over the years was thinking about in doing this. I never wanted the schools and the students that we were supporting to feel like I was trying to make this about me, right? There are school, there are a number of martial arts schools in this general area. Many of them have been on the show. Many of them have schools, you know, great example, Freddie LePan. He's a friend. He's been immensely supportive. He came on, what, episode 12 or something? He lives two towns over. I think the world of him. I don't want it to even remotely appear like I'm trying to take his students. Yeah, yeah. He's a wonderful instructor. Mm -hmm. And that's part of why I, I, where I've put the school and everything. So, so that was in the back of my head for a very long time. But as I came to understand more and more about what was going on and, and what I wanted to do and what was important, not just in my local area or my own personal fears, but I said, wait a second, if I can, if I can test some of these theories and they work and I can help martial arts school owners, not only progress on the business side, but on their teaching methodology side, I, I have a responsibility to do so. The role that I claim that I am in, I have to do this. No, it's not that I don't want to, but I am nervous. Sure. And I think you're nervous because you want it to go well. You care. Yeah, you know, I do. You care about what you're doing. Um, and you, we've talked a little bit, you have a fair number of people you anticipate being in your first class tomorrow. Yeah. So I, I think the first thing to let people know is that I live, I've been looking for a space for almost two years. I live in a very small town. Uh, if you look at, you know, where Whistlekick is headquarters, we are in Montpelier, Vermont. It's the smallest state capital. It's 8,000 people. But guess what? Legally, I don't even live in Montpelier. I live in a town called Moortown. Yep. And it's just the, the, just the way the postal stuff hits, right? Like it says Montpelier on our addresses and everything, but I pay my taxes to a little town called Moortown. Actually, my property taxes are right there. And Moortown has about 2,000 people. We have a general store. It's 20 minutes away. That gives you an idea of where I live. I'm 20 minutes away from <laughs> the general store. Uh, and it took a while to find a location because I wanted to do something in a certain area that wasn't going to be obviously, no, I mean, I'm pretty sure that you know, a variety of the friends that I have that teach in the state that if I opened something near them and was doing something different and not being a jerk in my advertising, they'd have no issue with it. But just for the sake of optics, because of, again, because of Whistlekick, because of this role that I'm in, it was really important that I, that I did this, uh, within, uh, in excess of, of ethical visibility, I guess is what I'll call it. Yeah. But I finally found something and it is the old, more town town hall it's where we have town meeting and those of you outside of new england was town meeting it's we we vote on things by hand it's like you know how many do you think we should buy a new fire truck right let me do that once here and it's a beautiful old space hardwood floors uh it's inexpensive to rent it's 50 dollars for four hours yep it has awkwardly placed support columns every good school which, should have those which I believe is, is an unofficial requirement of every, if not every martial arts school, every, every, uh, fledgling martial arts school needs an awkwardly placed support column. Yeah. Uh, in fact, there are two upstairs and we get access to the basement where there are three. So that's, mm -hmm. that's really exciting. And you know, it's, it's, it's in a, a decent area. 
Wi-Fi, which will play a role with some things that I'm looking to roll out. And it's just, it's, an, it's a nice space. So I finally found that space and we were set to go kind of internally. Uh, and, and, and by the way, uh, she has not been on the show and we will remedy this, but a woman in the area that I, I know from a, a now closed martial arts school, Corey, uh, Corey shows up to your trainings and, and, you know, she shows up to free training day. Some of you know her, but I'm at a point with everything I do. I don't have the emotional and energetic, uh, strength to pull things off on my own anymore. I need help. And so I reached out to Corey and, you know, we, we I laid out the concept, you know, much as I've, I've laid it out to all of you. She's like, yeah, that sounds great. Let's do it. And so we're looking for spaces. Couldn't find it. Finally found the space. Finally had the timing right. And we were going to open in about a month ago. And then I went away and I came back and I was back for less than 24 hours. And Vermont had the second most catastrophic flood it has ever had. And I was stuck home for three days. We haven't talked about this on the show because it really doesn't have relevance to martial arts. But in this case, it really does. Because the day I was going to go pay for my first few months in this space, I literally, uh, I, I literally couldn't get there. Yeah, you it was were impossible for me to drive there. I was li- there are four ways. I, I, um, I, I have two vehicles, one of them being a, a Jeep. And it is rather capable off-road. And I still couldn't leave. So that should give people an idea of, of what was going on. And so we had to wait. And, you know, here we are. It's August 22nd when we record this. Now, this isn't the same in every part of the country, but here in New England, culturally, we get to August and people start thinking about back to school. Yep. Most people either have kids or are involved in something that involves kids, school or whatever. And so the idea of launching something in August, uh, not great. But I didn't want to wait any longer, right? So yeah. tomorrow, you know, we'll have, we'll talk about the classes and the class structure a little bit. But we've got, there's a kid's class. And I have no idea how many people are showing up because I, one of the decisions I made was I'm going to keep it super simple. At the beginning, I don't want to build these difficult sales processes, which will get implemented over time. But I just, I can only focus on so many things. I wanted to focus yeah. on curriculum. Just, part, just have it open. Yeah. Yeah, so people are just going to show up and everybody's first class is free anyway. You know, that's my vision. So uh, we'll have some kids. How many? I don't know. Two, 20. Couldn't tell you. But the adults. I went in yesterday because originally they're in, in this space, this beautiful old building, it's like 200 years old. Uh, at the front, it's raised. There's a stage and it's not a super tall stage, but it's a stage. And I was like, this will be enough to start because the library also opens, operates out of this building. Because the last time we had a terrible flood, the library washed away. And I'm anticipating like 20 adults. Wow. Not going to fit 20 adults on the stage, not doing the things I want to do. So I went over yesterday and talked with the, the librarian. I was like, let's move some things. And everything's on wheels, really fortunately. So we've got plenty of space. And so I'm, I'm pumped because I'm hearing from people who live hours away that are coming for the first class to support. And I'm just, I'm so excited. You know, I, I'm very lucky in that I get to do this work. I get to do this work, you know, with you, Andrew, we've become great friends and I I get to meet all these wonderful people and work with all these wonderful martial artists, you know, school owners, students, really around the world. And to have some of them say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to drive three hours to come to an hour or two of classes. Cause yeah, there's a family class sandwiched in the middle, uh, you know, to drive six hours to train for two is yeah. quite the honor. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. What are you the most nervous about for tomorrow? Two things, uh, the unknown, right? Anytime you launch something, something's going to go funny. Something's going to go not according to plan, right? And is that going to be that, I mean, there are things that if you've sat down and thought, well, maybe the power goes out or um, maybe, maybe people get lost or I don't know, maybe, maybe so many people show up that it, 
or maybe nobody shows up, right? Like there are things that you could think about and say, okay, I could plan those, but it's never the things you plan for. It's never the things you expect. There's always something, right? Yeah. You know, somebody shows up and I don't know, they, they, here's a good example of it that I couldn't imagine happening, but it, it's, it's a fun example. Somebody, you know, dojo storms, they show up and they're like, I'm calling you out. <laughs> so I, just, I, I think you all know how I would respond to that to be like, yeah. No, this isn't a fighting class. I never said I was a good fighter. Get out. And make them do kata in the corner until they got bored and left. Um, and that's another thing that we, we should talk about what I'm teaching mm -hmm. at some point too. Um, so fear of the unknown is one. And then the other is how well my theories translate. You know, these ideas that I have in terms of curriculum which is locked at 25 techniques uh this what is essentially an algorithm a cadence of what is being focused on you know as a structure from which to teach uh, a platform how's that going to go over the fact that i am inviting people of different experiences different ranks to come and train and i'm not going to make them do things exactly my way if you I, I don't care if you come in from a taekwondo background or a filipino martial arts background and a karate background i don't care how you punch mm. i care that your punch has you know uh, technique in such a way that it, it is effective and i'll help yeah. you through that but i'm not going to say you know well you know you're pulling your hand back here versus here you know, if somebody wants to compete and I coach them on that, that's where I'm going to care about that. Mm -hmm. But there are, you know, and, and this is a, a, maybe this becomes a transitional moment here. People can only worry about so many things. <clears throat> where they pull their ha hand back is less important than most of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Now, what are you the most excited about for tomorrow? Hmm. In a sense, this is 20 years in the making. Hmm. And if you think back, how many how many hours have I put into Whistle Kick? Countless. Some, some, some stupid number, right? It's been an insane number over the last decade. And I have helped... I believe I've made a contribution to, to the world, to the world of martial arts. And as I've done that, I've taken a lot. You know, not, not taken, but I, I've received a lot. I've, uh, and... I'm excited to try to put together what I believe is a better mousetrap. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna crap on what anybody else does. One of the things I love is that martial arts is done and taught in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. But I think I've, got, I'm, I think I'm on to something here. And if I, if even half of my theories are correct, this methodology becomes a massive step forward without losing the things that makes traditional martial arts great. That's the big thing, right? Like over the last 20 years, by including MMA in the conversation, we've had conversations around curriculum change. Mm -hmm. We've had some conversation around teaching methodology, but we have not had conversation about learning understanding, the way people learn. Yeah. And that's what I'm most passionate about in this context. Cool. Uh, and before we wrap up, let's talk really quickly, briefly about what your curriculum is going to be like. Yeah. So as I was jotting notes, and this goes back, there's a piece of paper. I, I, may, I don't know that I saved it. I scanned it. There's a piece of paper where I just had one of those moments where it almost wasn't, it was almost like it wasn't coming from me. I was like, <gasps> And I kept finding the number five, right? I grew up with the pinyon katas. There's five of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. White, yellow, blue, green, brown. There's five. And I kept finding five in other ways. And if, if you've been to All in Weekend or a number of other seminars that I've taught, uh, Craig and I talk about this at Matic, most people can handle three to five choices. And one of the core issues in the way martial arts is generally taught is that people are either told 
no, you didn't do that thing. You should have done this one correct way, which breaks their brain, or it's left completely open to them and they have a bajillion things and they can't choose. Mm -hmm. Three to five is where the psychology of choice comes in. That, like that's an effective set of choices. So let's give people five stances. Let's give people five kicks. Let's give people five blocks, five uh, strikes, and then there's five miscellaneous. So there's five of five, and there's a five-week rotation. Not that we're only drilling basics, but there's a five-week rotation where it's one stance, one kick, one punch, and we'll work from those, and we'll get people better at those. Now, somebody is probably already yelling at their speakers or their, their screen or their TV, but Jeremy... There's more than five stances. There's more than five kicks. You're right. So let's take kicks as, as an example. Front kick, back kick, roundhouse, side, hook. What about crescent kicks? Uh, it's a front kick with a drift on the, on the hip. What about axe kicks? It's a front kick where you pull it back harder and then you stick it out. Mm-hmm. If you teach people those five and you say, you can find your other find other techniques of your own, then that gives you the ability to focus on the things that are most important without locking them down, right? A lot of martial arts schools, as people get to higher ranks, they spend a lot of time on techniques that are not frequently used in uh, theoretical or real combat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. But Jeremy, this one time I scored a point using an inside crescent kick. Great. I, I'm not going to tell people that you can't use it. But I, what would I rather have my students spending their time on? Mm -hmm. The front mm -hmm. kick. Spend yeah. your time on the front kick. Your crescent kick will get better. Yeah. So okay. if we worry about those fundamentals, and I don't lock them down and say, you can't cross train, you can't do anything else, it frees me up to worry about what I think matters most but because there's still going to be a lot of freeform time, they can figure out their own stuff and bring in their own understanding, especially if they're coming from other systems. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm looking forward to talking with you in a few weeks and finding yep. out how it went. Uh, anything to, to add before uh, we say goodbye for now? Mm, no, no. I, I, um, I know you and I will talk probably more on a personal level between now and then. Yeah. about this but uh i i hope that when we come back and we talk about this i hope that this section of our conversation as we often say i hope it just made you wonder i hope it made you ask questions mm -hmm. i hope you take a step back from what you do especially if you're an instructor and say why do i do it this way if you have a great answer do it if you don't have a great answer come up with a great answer and if that great answer requires you making some changes make the changes because this is how we've always done it is not a great answer. Awesome. All right. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, Jeremy. How's it going? I'm great, Andrew. How are you? I'm great. I feel like I, I just saw you like 10 seconds ago. You did. When we you ended did. the last recording, which was just before you were going to open your school. It's true. Um, so that was August 22nd. It is now September 12th. Yeah. Tomorrow will be the fourth class. Yeah. You will, yeah. You will have, you will have done a whole month. So a few things that I can say that I'm really happy about. The first thing is that everyone who has shown up has continued to show up. We have not had anybody that came and tried and said, this sucks. I hate it. I'm quitting. That's great. Which I'm really stoked about. Yeah. Uh, we've had a lot of inquiries on addition, you know, on, on people coming in. Uh, we've had one new student join. Last week was a bit of an anomaly because it was the hottest day of the summer. Mm -hmm. See here in Vermont, we had, um, we had like five days of summer and they all happened last week. Yeah. yeah. And 
I got to class and I'd already heard from a couple people that, you know, it's, it's too hot. I'm not gonna be able to do this because this building, it's an old building. There's no air conditioning. There's one window that has a screen on it. And I was like, you know, I get it. No worries. And I got there. I said, wait a second, there's a basement and we rent the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It was perfectly fine. It was 70 degrees down in the basement. Everybody's on cool concrete. Nobody noticed. Yeah. So let's back up a what, little what? bit. Uh, sure. Tell me about, or tell us about your very yeah. first class, right? Oh yeah. That would probably be a good thing. Uh, I was terrified, mm -hmm. which, you know, might, might be difficult for people to imagine, uh, given that, you know, I, I've, I've taught some rather large rooms and I do this show. And a huge part of my life involves being in front of strangers, either literally or kind of digitally. But I still get nervous, sure. right? Because when I teach a seminar, if people don't like it, it's a one and done for the most part, right? Yeah, like most point. of the time people have me back and everything. But if I completely screw it up, I don't have to see those people next week. Yeah, that's a good point. If I miss something in the way I teach and I catch it six weeks later, they suffer because I did a poor job, mm -hmm. right? And that's something, if if you've been paying attention to this show, if you know anything about Whistle Kick or me, you know that I set very high standards, that I, I set the bar really high for myself, usually um, what most people would probably call too high. But that's just how I'm built, right? Like I want to crush everything that I do. And so this was no different. But fortunately, through the last couple of years of consulting, working with schools, all my seminars, all these things, there were a few were kind of mantras in the back of my head. Keep it simple, you know, err on the side of doing less and focus on having fun. And that's what we've been doing. And you know, if you've been to a seminar that I've put on, uh, you, you've, you'd you recognize a lot of what we did, you know, just happened to be on a shorter time basis. Mm -hmm. And people are having a blast. They had a blast that first class. They left with lots of smiles. And I said, you know, I, if I can leave, if they leave smiling, I'm doing something right. So yeah. uh, second class was still a little nervous. Last class, still a little nervous. I'm probably going to be nervous every class because I want to do a good job. Sure. But the butterflies aren't quite what they were. Yeah. Now, with that first class, you went into the, the, I have to imagine, you went into that class with some sort of expectation of something, yep. like regardless of what that was, um, yep. did it meet your expectations? So I had some goals around numbers of students. Okay. And we met those numbers but it's almost all adults. I, and, and I talked about this on TikTok a little bit. I had a few people chime in and say that, you know, they've been at schools or they operate schools that are like this where it's primarily adults. But day one, uh, if I take out the, the friends that came to visit, we had 12 adults and two kids, which is so weird to me, mm. but it also is likely the time of year, you know, end of August, just before school starting, parents aren't, wanting to get routines going for their children yet or, or add new routines. And most of the inquiries I've been getting from the website have been for parents of children. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I expect those numbers to shift a little bit, Sure. but that, that was the first one. And then the second one, uh, I had an expectation which was realized in that building these classes around this curriculum and in the way that I am, was likely to lead to positive and educational experiences for people, regardless of prior experience. Mm -hmm. Because in my, in my adult class right now, I've got, you know, one, one prior black belt and two almost black belts, people that I might as well can, you know, I can consider those three people very high level of, in terms of their experience mm -hmm. in there with people who've never done any martial arts yeah. and they are training together and they are learning together and it is working beautifully. Okay. And what, 
happened on that first class that you didn't expect? Like what, I don't want to say what went mm. wrong, but what was something that you didn't expect to have come through other than having more adults than you had of kids? I didn't expect to be as comfortable as quickly and let uh, the humorous part of my personality come through. Oh, nice. Okay. You know, we've spent enough time together and you've seen me work seminar groups. I I figured I was going to be more serious until people got to know me. That all went out the window. I was goofy Jeremy from almost from moment one. Yeah. You know, um, it, we, we've had a term come up on the show from someone that I, I'm running with, serious fun. Mm -hmm. And every time I say it, I, I, I kind of playfully in my brain say it the other way, funly serious. You know? <laughs> Seriously fun, funly serious. Because that's the heart of it, right? If, if you have fun and you do some stuff that makes sense, you learn some things. And so just, just not letting it get too formal. Mm -hmm. Allowed for that. And, you know, there's not a, I don't know if there's a whole lot else that, that I want to go or get into, but the, the thing that I definitely want to hit on is you've now had three classes tomorrow will be your fourth class it's been a month we'll say have there already been things that have come up that you've said you know what i was going to do this but i'm, I'm going to i'm going to pivot and i'm going to do this other thing instead i don't necessarily mean technique stuff but like stuff about the school that you were planning on doing this and you uh. realized i need to change yes I am far more comfortable letting things kind of happen organically. So I haven't even offered to sell uniforms, geese to my students yet. Mm -hmm. Will I? Yes. And, and I've even last class, a couple of people asked, I said, you know, what are we doing about that? And I said, well, let's get t-shirts going first. And I've, I've got a t-shirt design and um, shout out to Corey, who's helping me with the school. Uh, Corey and I have batted that back and forth a little bit, but let's get t-shirts first. You know, let's, I don't have the full testing methodology, the evaluation methodology done. I've got most of it in my head. Some of it's down on paper, mm -hmm. digital paper, but I'm letting things happen much more organically because if we go back to that, are they having fun and are they learning? And if those two boxes are checked, I get lots of grace from everyone on those other things. Do I need to have the testing methodology done yet? No, they've had three classes. Sure. It's not, a, it's not a big deal. I'm not focused on rank. I'm not focused on uh, uniforms. I'm focused on, right? This comes back to the why. Why am I doing this? Because I had all these theories that I wanted to test and I'm testing them. And so far it's working out. Awesome. That's excellent. Um, anything else that you want to mention or, or um, go through? We're going to do a part three, right? Like in another month or so. I'd we, like to. We can. It wasn't. It wasn't if we, on the list, but we can. Depend. It depends on if we need if we need this episode sooner. What do you no. think? No. Okay, then let's. I, I'd I'd like to give it a little bit more time, and and talk a little bit more. Um, we might also. Um, and the audience gets to kind of see behind the scenes here. Uh, maybe we can put something in the Facebook group, in the, the new martial arts radio group, questions for, for like part three, you know, what questions would people have about this school? And we can incorporate those next time. Sure. That sounds great. Okay. Cool. Um, I, I think the way I want to leave this section is my why is completely connected to my how. And so I'm having a great time and it's working out. You know, the, my reasons for teaching are completely present and evident, I guess is a better word, in the curriculum, in the, the way I am teaching. And I remember what it was like when I was teaching CrossFit at this same time roughly the same distance away from my house. 
And if you've been around a while, you know I love CrossFit. I didn't have this much fun. Because it wasn't my school. It wasn't my curriculum. It wasn't my why. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we'll see you in about three weeks. Sounds good. Thanks. All right, see ya. And Jeremy, here we are. Yeah. So it's been, how long has it been since we, I opened the school, it was the last week of August. Yeah. It's the first week of October. Five, I think, I think Wednesday's going to be the seventh class. Yep. So just under two months. Yeah. Okay. And so how's it been going? Like, you know, I love the beginning of any business. You know, really I am, I'm an entrepreneur at heart, less so more so than a, a business owner. Mm -hmm. So it's that early energy that I absolutely thrive on as part of why I like working with schools that are getting started. Not that I don't help anybody. It's why I like working with new businesses of any kind. And because there's so many ideas, right? Like, you know me well enough to know my mind races constantly. Um, it, it is oft frustrating to the people around me, but that means that it's a little, it's a little more appropriate to have a thousand and one ideas and to throw them at a brand new business mm -hmm. than it is to throw them at a well-established business and make people go, whoa, what's going on here, right? We've attracted a few new students. Mm -hmm. since, you, since your first class. Since, since the first class. Good. Have not lost any students. That was going to be my next question. Um, so we started, so day one, we had two children and... 11 adults mm -hmm. and we are at 14 adults. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've added two adults. Um, 11 to 14 is three. Sorry. 12 to 14. Okay. I'm, I'm just thinking of who, who's new yeah. since day one. But you've got 14 adults now. But we've had a few others come and try mm -hmm. that at least what they expressed was logistically Wednesday just doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with where it's headed, mm -hmm. right? I, I think it's really easy in our space when, when people talk about the number of students they have. You don't hear from the 10, 20, 30 student schools often. Yeah. You hear about the, I have 500 students. I have a thousand students. I made a million dollars. And if that is your goal, that is awesome but mm -hmm. that is not the majority of schools no absolutely not and just as an aside that's why there are a number of things that we're doing as an organization to support smaller schools and part of why i wanted to do this was to immerse myself back in that culture and mm -hmm. make sure i wasn't missing things and when you say we're doing you mean whistle whistle kick is yeah. doing because i want to make clarify for the audience that you're not talking your martial arts school no. is doing so <laughs> things that whistle kick is doing to help smaller schools yeah, yeah absolutely um yesterday I emailed everybody who had reached out with interest but not shown up mm -hmm. and just said, hey, just want to check in. You yep. know, and there was half a dozen, dozen people and heard back from a few. And, you know, some of them have other stuff going on. They're like, you know, I'm thinking about this as a winter activity. Totally cool. Mm -hmm. Now, it's been, we'll, we'll round up. We'll just say it's been yeah. two months, right? <clears throat> um, and we we already talked about things that happened on day one that you didn't anticipate in the last two months. Has the progress been what you expected? And I don't mean progress of students. I mean of yeah. the school. Um, I always set the bar really high. Mm -hmm. I know you do. <laughs> so, um, and and I do that for a variety of reasons we won't get into. But the bottom line is. While I'm not disappointed, I had hoped for more. I always hope for more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I've told you, I know I've told my students, once we hit 25 students total, we'll add a second day. Mm -hmm. You know, So I'm, I'm getting them involved in the benefit. And we'll probably add in a second location. I, I, I don't see having a, an established brick and mortar like this is my space just because there's so much more you have to worry about. Oh, oh, my question, ever or for right now? I don't know about ever, but at least for right now. Because, yeah. you know, here's the thing. Every night I go in, I teach, and I teach. Mm -hmm. It costs me 50 bucks. If I did that every day, that would be 1500 bucks. Yeah. 
Am I going to get a space anywhere close to what I have for 1500 bucks a month? No. Yeah. Not a chance. Yeah. No, and that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And, you know, there's something to be to be said for that, like having a, a separate location that you just rent out. Like, you know, one of my Shotokan school that I was a part of for 16 years, our classes were at a VFW. Or no, it was an um, uh, Eagles club, Fraternal yeah. Order of the Eagles. And it was the same thing. The instructor came in once a week. And he only had to pay rent for that one day. Yeah. And so that was something to be said. And I think it depends on how much time is going into it. Right? Sure. Um, I don't know that my personal involvement in this school, and, and I'm saying those words specifically, that my personal involvement in this school goes beyond two days. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's fair. I would love to see the school become more. And, and that's probably the other thing to mention. I think we talked about in the first segments that I was testing some things. I had yes. some ideas. Yeah. And those ideas are absolutely proving true. Awesome. Uh, students are, I think the place most people would notice it would be in defense. People are defending brilliantly with less than two months under the belt. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's phenomenal. The, the kind of the last question I have that I think what we can wrap up on is, where do you go from here? You've already talked about if you get 25 students, you're going to open up another location uh, or another class, maybe a separate location. But but what is the next big step for you and this new school? I don't know. Okay. You know, every week, and, and I don't know if you saw it because I know you came in, you put your drink over there on the counter. You may have seen all of my notes. So what happens, I come back from class and I've got my class plan and... I've got a couple other pieces of paper that come with me, you know, new new releases and whatever, and then all that stuff goes there. And it usually sits there for a couple days. Class is tomorrow, so, you know, it's been sitting there for a few days. And I make notes through the week. Oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. And I'm making notes. And then tomorrow I'll, I'll go to, I'll sit down and look at my class plan and say, okay, this is what I want to do. And it's really at the point of being iterative now. You know, it's, I don't think there are any massive things I'm going to do differently because what would those be? Changing days of the week, changing locations, changing what I teach. I, I don't think there's an upside to doing any of that. So it's how do I keep moving things forward? And it's, you know, peek behind the curtain is the things that I focus on with the clients that I work with. Mm -hmm. Focus on retention. Make sure that your students have fun and learn in that order. And everything else will fall into place. And that's what's happening. M most of the people who have tried classes, it was word of mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, you know, I, I've got Facebook ads going. I've got posters up around town. There are a lot of things that I'm doing, but it's still that word of mouth. And how do you do that? Have fun and make sure they leave having learned something new. And I think I'm, I'm checking those boxes well enough that what's next is fairly obvious. I'm going to be constantly making refinements to the curriculum and how things are presented and the drills that we do. I'm going to make refinements to how we market the school and how things operate. And I think, you know, the only other thing I think might be of interest to people is when we launched day one, I didn't do anything around etiquette. I didn't get everybody and say, okay, when you walk in the door, you got to bow and you got to do this and you got to do this. Uh -huh. I'm just slowly trickling it out. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Because what happens at an established school? They see everybody else bow. They pick it up. They yeah. figure, okay, I'm supposed sure. to bow when this happens. Maybe they don't know why, but they do it. I didn't want to spend the first 20 minutes going over. Okay. This is what you do. This is how you bow. This is why you bow and everything. Because mm -hmm. that's less important to me. Yep. Yep. Um, and it does lead to a question that I hadn't thought of asking, which is have and we as a friend couple and with Craig and others talk, have talked quite a bit about school culture and developing a culture. Yeah. How are you finding the culture of your school is being developed yeah. and ha has it, has it found its own yet or is it too new? It's, it's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that was critically important to me in the culture was that it would be mutually supportive. And this goes back to the curriculum and, and the idea that I didn't, I think we gave the example before of how a punch is executed, you mm -hmm. know, maybe where the retracted hand goes and mm -hmm. everything. Uh, my theory, and it seems like it's proving true, is that 
is if I'm not at the front of the room saying this is exactly how everything has to be, then the students will find comfort in, well, try this, mm -hmm. try that. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that's where the most education comes from is that experimentation process. And that seems to be happening. I notice we do a lot of partner work and I notice that when students switch around, they are communicating about what they're doing. They are communicating in a mutually supportive way mm -hmm. whereby they are learning from each other through that iterative experimentation. That's amazing. That's great. Great to hear. So um, there's also a lot of humor. You've, that you've, does not surprise me. You've been in the room enough times when I've led classes that, yeah. you know, I, I want to make sure it's not too serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so I think we're going to wrap up, but I could see us coming back together in about a year or so yeah. and doing a follow-up and seeing where things are looking from there. That sounds good. Uh, there are also, and a little bit of foreshadowing, you may or may not even know this. Ooh. I have a plan whereby the audience might get to see what my classes look like and even participate in them. Mm, that's uh, cool. And that is not an exclusive thing to my school. There's a, there's a plan in the works. Cool. Well, it sounds great. Jeremy, thank you for taking the time. Thanks, Andrew. Hey, I appreciate you. being here. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. So this is where we'll close it. So thank you everyone. I appreciate your support. I've received a lot of wonderful support and questions. Just, I mean, this episode isn't even out and people have been reaching out. How's it going? And, and they, they want to know. And it's, it's nice to feel that from everyone. And I think if you have a school, take that same approach. How do I get things, make things 1% better? How do I slowly move forward? Not just in what I teach, but how I teach, who I am, where I am, etc. And if you don't have a martial arts school and you want one, you don't have to do a lot. My costs per month with insurance are about $250, $300. Let's round up, call it $300. Mm -hmm. It costs me $300 a month to run this school. Mm -hmm. I need six students to break even. If we're talking kids, I need seven students to break even in there, right? It's not much. And... Every school does not have to be a million dollar school. It doesn't have to have a thousand students. For a lot of us, running a school is the next step in our martial arts education and development. So don't shy away from it if it's something you're feeling called to do. Awesome. If you want to support Whistlekick and what we do, head to whistlekick.com. Check out everything we've got going there. We've got the Patreon. We've got all kinds of cool stuff. And if you want to reach out, Jeremy at whistlekick.com, Andrew at whistlekick.com. Our social media is at whistlekick. And until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and, and have, have a great, great day. day. Wow, we nail it when we're in the same room. <laughs>